streaming, 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 rahad, streaming, streaming, streaming. Okay, da -da 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 -da. hello and welcome to the stream. The uh, pre-stream chatter today was the song Rawhide, except with the word Rolden replaced with the word streaming. I have not streamed in a uh, few days, so you're welcome for that. Um, and the reason I haven't streamed is, you know, because I'm going to just mention it here. I was a little bit under the weather. I, I am feeling better now. Hopefully, uh, this will, you know, this, I don't know if it's, I, and I know everyone's going to say it's probably the coronavirus. I don't think it actually was. I think it was just a regular flu, fairly mild, uh, fairly mild and not, not very dangerous. But it is something I did, didn't want to stream while doing it because I got tired easily, more so than I do just being an old freaking man. Okay. So last time we were trying to find lunar occultations of stars when the moon gets in front of a star. And I think I actually used a fairly poor technique here. Um, I decided we were going to go through, we're going to find the moon's position and then go through all the stars and see which stars were close to the moon. Um, and to do that, we had to use a fairly small, um, fairly small interval because we don't know how, we know how much the moon moves per hour. But, you know, we, and so we need to make sure that we can catch it when the moon is very close to a given star without accidentally skipping over the star where it's like almost close enough then it skips to the next hour to be too far away on the other side. A better way of doing this is actually going to be, um, it seems more inefficient, but it's actually going to be more efficient to uh, stream, uh, to loop through the stars uh, because we know that the moon, the stars are pretty much fixed, not exactly, they do have some proper motion, uh, but because they're pretty much fixed, uh, we know that the moon visits any given star about once a month, about once on its on its orbit around the Earth. Um, and if you're picky, that of course is it's not quite the same thing because uh, the sun also moves, so it's it's the moon's I think sidereal period uh, instead of its sidonic period. But but in roughly speaking, we can take much larger jumps if we're just looking at one star. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. It is Pomodoro time, but this is the first one, so we're skipping it. Okay, and I get a pop-up, by the way, if, in case you're wondering who I'm talking to. Just talking to myself there. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go through um, all the stars like this. Um, uh, we're going to add proper motion later on, because right now we're going to just for testing look at stuff that's pretty close by. Um, and then what we're going to do here is, now we need a function. Let's see. Um, oh, we have a function in here that measures the separation. Um, let's see, and this function, now if we flip these loops, we're going to have a small problem in that uh, we don't know which star we're looking at. Here we do because we're inside this loop. Um, actually, that might be okay. Hang on. The only problem is we might be redefining uh, this, uh, this, um, this function sep, and I don't know if that's valid. But okay, so we go through the stars, find the position of this one star, and then from here, define this function. And from here, we just, oh, okay. And here we can do a geometric search. Um, now I gotta be a little bit careful here. Uh, GFQ, and is decreasing. Um, right, so we need to define our GFQ a little bit differently. Uh, the thing we're looking for, and, um, oh, this is our GFQ, fudge. Okay, that's okay. We can still do this. Um, so our GFQ is going to be... Um, what, are we, what are we assigning to value? We're assigning the minimum separation. So we do, we do need to rewrite this a little bit. So our GFQ is going to be... But here's the problem. We have a star we want to pass into this function because we want to know the moon's angular distance from a given star. But... The problem is we don't, this is a GFQ function, it has to have a certain signature. It has to have an ephemeris time and a pointer to a value, a pointer to a double. Um, so I think, and I'm almost sure that I'm wrong about this, we can actually cheat and use the variable i because while this loop is running, i is defined and we can do things with it. And I say that as though it were true and I have no freaking idea. Um, so, th th so that's nice. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see. So what we want here is some okay, I, and part of this is going to be down below because we were doing sort of we do want the separation. There we go. Okay, so we have um, 
sent in two variables. We can't send it anymore. We have no choice in this. Um, so we compute the star position, which is kind of weird because we're now doing it inside of a, a function inside of a loop. Uh, but we do need that because we, um, oh, hang on, do we need that? Um, no, we can use the global star position. We can have this compute that for us. And just, we're going to point this out, of course. Note, we use global star pause here for star position. And the, the problem with that, of course, is you're not supposed to, I mean, you, this really should be a parameter to this function, but it can't be. Okay, so what we want to do here is there's the star's position, uh, and we want... Um, Okay, what are we doing here? Angsep? What the hell is Angsep? Um, what is Mincep? Jesus Christ. What am I doing? I have no freaking idea. Is Mincep even used? Oh, it is. Um, oh, because here we're going through a loop to find the closest star, which we don't need to do anymore because we're just looking at one star. So what we need to do here is we find the moon's position, uh, which is... Uh, ETCN 399 is the moon. Wait. No, it's not. It's the Earth's position. Uh, right. Oh, what the hell? Okay, hang on. Uh, right, we find the moon's position here as referenced by the center of the Earth. And the angular separation is, um, is this. And do we have a moon pause defined somewhere? I'm sure we do. We, we probably have it defined globally. We do. Okay. Um, and then what we want basically is just return the angle of separation. So that's not too difficult. We just say value equals angsep. Okay. So I, I really don't know if this is going to work. My, am I, and something tells me I screwed something up. Um, yep, I did. We don't have anything here that tells us the hell is this. Okay. We have nothing here that tells you the distance from the sun, uh, from the star. Um, so that's the angular separation we need, and let's see, here we go. Uh, and the separation we want to compute is the star pause, which, we're get, which we have as a global variable, and we want to divide it by the angular separation, which is the minimal angular separation, god damn it, something, 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 something. Um, that is, oh yes, this is actually the correct angular separation uh, that would give us an occultation. Uh, and I think that accounts both for the fact that you are on, um, can be on either side of the Earth, and that um, the Moon has an angular radius. So, and if we wanted to be special, we could just say, All right, so we have this function here. Now we don't need any of this bullshit. So now our function just becomes, now we just need to do a GFQ, uh, you know, a GFUD search. Uh, a search to see when this, um, uh, we want to find the local minima of this star. So of GFQ is decreasing. Um, local min, I think, I'm going to double check that because I am stupid. Oh, I think I actually had it on the, on the page. Um, User defined scalar, blah, 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 takes two functions that we're giving it. Um, relate can be any apps min, loc min, I got it right, wow, okay. No, I didn't, I put in local min. Okay, uh, so we have this going on here. Uh, this will now, GFQ, da, da, da. there's a slight problem here. We're putting the result into result, but we, uh, the CM fine is the, the confinement window, which will stay constant. We're putting the result in the result, but we're never clearing out results. So this is a little bit ugly. Um, we will, we're going to run out of memory is what's going to happen. Um, but let's see what we can do here. Um, so we, we don't actually need to keep the results for a given star. So we can just print them out here, and then we can, uh, get ri we can empty out the result uh, the result window. So we can hold it for more. For right now, I'm going to do it this way, uh, just to watch the result window maybe crash. I mean, there's 
2086 five stars. Every star is going to hit a local min about 12 times a year, and we're doing a period of one year. Um, so I will go ahead and put a to-do here, uh, even if we don't break it right now. Okay. Um... Mm, oh shit. Okay, sorry. This is probably ugly because I'm copying it from another piece of code, but uh, so we count how many results we get, which in our case should be about 12 or 13. Find the beginning and end times of that result, and uh, the chosen one is just I. Okay, this the the odds this is going to compile the first time is pretty much zero. Um. And then we get out of the function, and now, if this compiles, if this even compiles, I'll be impressed. If it actually runs, I'll be beyond impressed. Okay, let's just see what this does. Uh, okay, there we go. Unused very. Oh my god, it actually compiled. Um, the count better be used somewhere. I, I botched a for loop here. Hang on. I need to find it. There it is. Uh, then basically for each I... Oh, 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 oh! J. See? That's because we already have an I. J. Do this, and then do this. Do this should... God damn it. Auto format, Emacs. Stop being a prick. All right, so now we're going to go through all the times it finds it, print them out, and print out the... And actually, I want to print out the... Um, I want to print out the separation as well, although it occurs to me... Um, GFUDS doesn't actually give you that information. It tells you the time at which it's minimal, uh, which we could feed to this, this function. Um, and print out that value. But for right now, let's just, because I'm so convinced it's not even going to compile, I just want to sort of, um, God damn it. Focus, F2, F2, oh, it's not, it doesn't do that. Okay, in some, some modes. Um, anyway, let's just run this to see if it runs. And I guess I will just be nice to get rid of the other variable that we're not using anymore, which is the chosen one. Oh, it's such an awesome variable name. Okay, let's go ahead and run this again. See if it makes. It probably won't work, even if it does make. Well, it did make. Now let's see if it works. And there's another problem I need to deal with. Yeah. Um, holy crap, that was fast. That was, like, way, way fast. Okay. And it'll be even faster now, because... Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, that's the GFQ function itself. We don't need a tolerance of 3,600. We don't need a tolerance of one hour. The moon, um, we could in theory get like 15 days here. I'm going to just do 10 days to be safe. But, um, but yeah, so um, that's that's kind of awesome. It works and it actually ran. That's pretty fast. Okay. Um, so now, because we are never happy tweaking. Um, we could test with any of these stars by looking to see when the moon is closest to that star. Uh, that would be the thing to do, but let's be a little bit more fancy. Okay, I don't know if I really want to do this. Um, double, okay. Alright, I'm going to create a variable here called sep, and the only reason we're going to use it is because inside of this count, we want gfq of the et, which we're going to call, beginning and end are the same here because we're using a local minimum, so it doesn't really matter. And we'll send it the address of uh, sep. God, I hope I haven't screwed something up terribly. And then we can actually print sep as well. So this is the start and end time, which we don't even need the end time anymore because they're identical. Um, and then this will just be sep. And there's a reason we're doing this, uh, which I won't tell you about right now.
because that's the way I am. All right. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay. Now this number is really. Oh, that number is insanely large. It's way too large. Um. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pipe this all to temp, and then find the smallest value of this, which should give us the the. If there is an occultation this year, it'll give it to us. If there isn't, it'll give us the closest approach to an occultation. And I will very cleverly name my file temp output. So I could have done the T there, but uh, so it's still going to take a little bit of time because we have uh, you know 15 bajillion stars or whatever. Um, and while we're doing this, let's see how reasonable these um, these start the these these start and end times are from each other. I mean, so there's this one, and then well, actually, then the stars are pretty close to each other. So yeah, let's just see what happens. And if we want, we can watch it here using tail f. Uh, 1600. Okay, so it's going really fast, even though uh, there are a lot of stars. Um, I don't actually remember how many we had. It's let's. Um, I mean, there's no there's no need to mention it in um, in the H file, but I think I do anyway, just to be f just for fun. Yeah, two eight six five. Oh, that's not that many. We should practically be done now. There we are. <laughs> okay. So here we go. This is the uh, closest approach at every every cycle the moon makes to a given star. Some of these numbers are insanely large, which worries me. But we'll deal with that later. Okay, so we want the fourth field, numerically. Let's give, give me the head there. Okay. So at the time of 1049 on May 20th, we should be really close to star 204. Don't know what star that is, but you know, hey, it's star 204. And this is probably, since it's a lot less than one, this is, should be an occultation condition. Uh, now the problem here is, and I want—I think this is going to worry me enough that I want to do something about it. We don't actually know anything about star 201. I mean, we can't even really find it in um, in this file because we we, we could we could count down to 100 and whatever. But let's go ahead and give some more data about this star. Let's go ahead and um, um, so absolute magnitude is not that important, although I think I keep it. Yes, I, I literally say that. So the only thing we really want right now is the magnitude of the star, because that's going to tell us what kind of star we're looking for. Uh, and again, this is all blah, 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 testing. We do need to do a lot better job of this. So that would just be HYG data, I, because that, no, 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 not I, J, sorry, because we were doing that one. Uh, and then one, because it's the second element, and C has zero extra rays. Okay. Now, I've probably done a bad thing here by, when it was working, I should have, uh, I should have GitHubbed it. I will do that in just a second here, even before I run it. So hang on a second here while I push it to git, just so we don't lose this wonderful ugliness. And now, um, let's do this again. And we can tail off our temp. This is just pointless here. Uh, 287. So this will take a, a few more seconds, during which I will enjoy a beveraging product. Okay, so this, this is a good speed. Now, we're going to have some other issues here. The moon is sort of a special case because it's so close to Earth. We might want to see whether any of the planets, um, or even their moons, I'm going to put that on to do before I forget, uh, whether the planets or any of their moons um, occult stars as well. Or asteroids, minor planets, even invisible ones, um, because if they move in front of the star, the star the star still gets dark, uh, even if we can't see the thing that's covering it. Um, so, okay, and I think I remember the site that I'm going to check against. Uh, I think it's calsky.com. Let me double check real quick before I say that. Um, um, 
oh wow, I really do go back and forth with the guy from CalSky, and some of it is on GitHub. Um, wow. Yay! So this guy, it is CalSky, and actually, one reason to do this, probably not a good reason, is uh, last time I ran something, um, and uh, and I you know want to test against him. I actually found um, I actually found uh, a mistake in his program, and he, he admitted it openly. And I am listed on the corrections page, which we may or may not go see. We will go see the site. Okay, so once again, um, this is a 4.99 star, which is enough to be visible. I mean, I think it's a little bit on the faint side, but <laughs> this is really nice. I and mean, we might do this one next. This is probably like a good bright star that gets occulted this year. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up Stellarium on May 20th, 2020. Again, if you're wondering, is Stellarium really necessary? The answer is no, and at some point I might actually stop bringing it up because it is a very heavy program um, to bring up. Uh, I don't know why it can't be run from that particular screen. Oh, hang on, hang on, background, 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 there you go. Uh, it is a heavy program to bring up for something just like this. Um, and there are other ways of doing the same thing. So at some point we might find, in fact, I'll put it to do, find alternative to, st Stellarium is a brilliant, beautiful way of doing it. Uh, but it is also not a very efficient way of doing it. It is, um, it is, uh, takes style, form over style. I think that's a, th that's a thing. All right, let's go find the moon. Here comes the moon. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Okay. And again, this only says there's an occultation somewhere on the planet. It does not say uh, there's an occultation in Albuquerque. So let's see if we can find the star of... Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are back. Um, I did re remember something we want to do before we, while I was pomodoring, while I was walking around. Um, we want I have a lot of data that's in my BC Git, but I don't think Google indexes it. And while we shouldn't really be doing reverse magic for Google, um, we, we kind of have to. Uh, and one of the things I noticed, I think it's in here. Yeah, Moon Enter Sextons has only four Google results. Uh, I don't know if that means there's only four people who've ever tried to put the moon in its correct constellation. Uh, but if I want to do that, I get the sense that GitHub is not the place to do it. At least not GitHub in the Git sense. Uh, putting it up on GitHub pages would probably be better. And to do, and Google also won't index really big files. Uh, that look like data again bad um, so we need to we need to clean it up a little bit maybe post like one year at a time for this century or you know for the next 50 years and then sort of divide it into centuries or whatever um, so there's never too many links on a page or whatever uh, Google will let you actually look at your uh, your pages um, 
Uh, and we might do that. Google will tell you how it's indexing your pages, and we might do that at some point. Uh, but that, that's, that's sort of an extra step. The first thing is to make it available to Google. Although, again, we shouldn't have to be doing that. All right, so this is a, no, this is, okay. I really, really need to, to fix this. Um, I thought I'd saved my settings last time, but I guess not. Uh, one of these is save all settings, piece of crap. Okay, because we only do want to be looking for, yeah, we don't want to be looking for stars that faint. Okay, this is the moon. Uh, is this the 4.99 magnitude? No, it is not. Okay, and it's possible, I realize it's possible it's behind the moon right now, which is, which would be ironic. Um... This is 4.33, it might be it, because you know, not everyone measures um, magnitude the same. 5.45, uh, I think this might, ooh, shiny, uh, no. I think this might be the star in question. Um, yeah, I guess at times like this, I kind of wish I'd put in the, um, the hip number as opposed to just um, a bunch of coordinates. Um, all right. Well, one way to find out really quickly is we're going to go ahead and track the moon, and we will um, we'll make sure there's nothing hiding behind it really quickly first. Okay. And there wasn't. And it does look like hip to be square. No, 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 not hip to be square. Hip eleven four two seven. No. Whoa. Cool. I didn't make a click on stuff on the moon. Stellarium gets weirder every day. Okay, this is a 6.45 magnitude. That is not nowhere near um, 4.99. Did I? I think I did that over here. There we go. Uh, so we're looking for a 4.99 magnitude star, star 204 in our array, which doesn't help us at all. Oh, uh, actually, there, there is one thing more thing we can do. Instead of just printing where it is in the array, we can print its ID, and then we can look it up in the HYG data file. So that, that might be a clever thing to do. All right. And it, despite the fact that it's really a, uh, a decimal, because arrays have to be of the same time, I had to put it in as a floating point number. So this will just be HYG data, J0. This will at least give it to us in what HYG considers to be its ID, which is different from what we did, because our IDs don't increase one at a time, because we skipped stars, and for other reasons as well, probably. But I think I beat that to death. Um... Make still runs, yay! Okay, and we'll do this. And let's just make sure it's actually doing what we want. Yeah, it is. It's spitting out the last coordinate here. Now, because blah, blah, because we know the I forgot what it, which one it was though, uh, but we know it's actually in here already because it's one of the low numbers in terms of our array. So if we, we were being impatient, I could just do this. Um, even before it's finished outputting the output. Before it's either give us different results, there it is. Uh, so this is star 355 uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the HYG data. And we could certainly look at that. 355 comma, actually I should, yeah, I should really be doing this, egrep beginning of line 355 comma that only should only get this one star or maybe no stars okay maybe oh okay mm, oh I know it's wrong <laughs> yeah this is a this is a um, there we go this is a, uh, a, a, a compressed file. Less will uncompress it for me, but uh, grep won't, and that's probably a good thing, so we use the compressed version of grep. Okay, so this looks like it is a file that is called 3Cetus. Um, all right, 3Cetus, can you feed us information? All right, let's take a look here. Um, that's 73. Well, obviously, I know we can do this, 3Cetus. Okay, not looking too good, but the moon does move pretty damn fast. So let's get, let's get, let's take a look here real quick. Um, and it's possible that there's a glitch in the sense that the moon somehow gets closer and then further away. Although this, this is, 
This is bad. I mean, if this is correct, this is bad. That doesn't sound right. If the results we're getting are um, valid, so let's take a let's make sure I got the date right. Maybe I'm way off or something. So it says here, May twentieth at ten forty nine a.m. We're about eight hours before this. So let's go happily back in time. That seems like a long... Well, I shouldn't say that, because I don't really know what the scale is here. It does seem like a lot of distance for the moon to cover in eight hours, but hey, it's the freaking moon. It can do what it wants. Oh, here we go, here we go. Nope. Wait, where did our 3C just go? Oh, crap. I thought we had that... Yeah, it's way the hell down there. So this is not cool. Um... Our angular separation is not being measured correctly. Uh, let, let's see if the moon does eventually... Nope, I want to find the moon again. Our moon, Earth moon. Uh, let's see if it does occult it just off by time, although that that's not very promising. I mean, that, the, there's something still very, very wrong here. Uh, here comes three Cetus. Where is it? Did I miss it? Is it only shown if I select it? Or is it this far away? Holy crap! Okay. Very seriously ugly. Okay. So this means if we were computing the moon's right ascension and declination, uh, we would be way off. Either that or I've effed things up so badly uh, that it's not computing the moon's occultation and declination. So let's go over here. And it's possible I'm using a global variable. There's, there's lots of ways to fuck up programming. Okay, so double angle separation equals this. Okay. So I guess the qu question here is the uh, position of the moon as viewed from the Earth. We can use this data to compute the moon's right ascension and declination. Uh, which is effectively what we're doing here. Uh, unless, oh shoot, shit, shit, shit. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the HYG, HYG data guy is using um, J2000 coordinates in his XYZ system. Uh, if he's not, we're screwed. Um, but let's go ahead. I think, I'm pretty sure he was because I actually looked at that. So what we can do here is um, la 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 la. Uh, we can print the uh, the time. Uh, actually, we'll print it as Unix time, but same thing. And then we will print the um, right ascension and declination. Uh, so the this is Unix to et et. The uh, right ascension is oh, what are we doing here? Arctangent of a ten to. I know I have a spherical XYZ, and I probably should just use that. And they have one too, actually. I think, in fact, theirs is better than mine. In fact, it is. Spherical to rectangular? Um, okay. And the only problem here is I'm going to need to declare another um, another variable here. So, uh, actually, sorry, this is rectangular. We want to go the other way. Rectangular to spherical. Yeah. B which I know we've used before, so... Rectospherical of yeah, I'm gonna have to see how I used it before. I am. Um, it's uh, just basically a ooh. Right, it takes oh, it doesn't take an, a vector. It takes in um, it takes in three variables, which is very strange. You could just return a variable, but okay. And we will just for fun, not for fun. We will just call these. Oh, that should have been. Oh, let's see. Da, 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 don't need this. Uh, R, which is the distance which we don't really care about. Colat, which we do care about. And lawn, which we do care about. Which will be the right ascension. Um, okay, so this will be. So rectosphere of uh, moon pause. And we'll give you R, the address of R rather, the address of the colat, and the address of the colon. Which sounds dirty. Ooh, no, sorry, the address of the lawn. Not the colon. That did sound dirty. Okay. 
So the right ascension here will just be uh, co the lawn, and the um, declination will be half pi, which they do have a function for, minus the colat to give it the lat. And let's see what this does. Now this is going to be very ugly because every time it tries to do something, it's going to call this. And I just want to check to see that we're somewhere reasonable within the range. We can't really keep doing. All right, make oh 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 implicit. Oh yeah, because every function in C spice ends with a underscore C. And I should already have known that. So rex sphere C. No more implicit declarations for you. Beautiful. And in this case, we're just gonna we're we're not gonna actually spit the output anywhere because we just want to look at it. Okay. Not great. Um, Et should not be anywhere near that low. Um, and I probably meant to say Et to Unix. So that's what's causing that. And I'm going to trust that doesn't change anything, although you'd be surprised. Or maybe you wouldn't. Okay, so this says the moon's um, right ascension declination. Th this is in all in radians, of course. So let's just go with the very first one and just see what the hell it says and whether it matches what we say. Uh, according to this, oh, actually, let me do one of these because it's going to scroll off the screen the moment I do that. So on January 11th of 2020, um, this is in radians, so pi radians is 12 hours. I need to fix that. <sighs> I think I fixed it in the OASIS, but I haven't sourced them, and since I never ever, f okay, come on. Okay, really? Just being a pain in the ass now. Why am I saying echo? I'm freaking moron, that's why. I meant to say calc. So about 8 hours and uh, about 8.4 hours, let's say, at January 11th. So let's just go there now. And this is, again, just a very basic check to see if something is so screwed up um, that, you know, we're not even close. All right, so let's find the moon. And let's stop time. It, time really annoys me. And we found the moon in the process of occulting something, I think. Now, I think this is the, the uh, background that they're using now. Although this is pretty close to the star, which is fairly bright. But anyway, um, right ascension, 8 hours, 41 minutes. We have here, it's not exactly the way we want it, actually. It's kind of off, actually. Um, 8.4, so that'll be, cl well, that's actually not great for the position of the moon. Um, what about the declination? Declination was plus 20, and our declination was 0.37. Uh, I might have to just fudge some more. Uh, I'm getting tired of doing this, so let's go ahead and uh, just put it in hours. And uh, Let's go ahead and put it in hours and minutes. Well, put it in hours. So the longitude is in radians. If you divide that by pi over c, no, pi, which is pi c, times 12, we get the hours. Uh, if we take this number, which is the declination, in uh, divided by pi over c, pi over c is equal to 180 degrees. And I think, hopefully, this won't, we won't ha get into the integer multiplication issue because all of the rest of these things are, uh, are uh, floating, floating point numbers. In this case, I do want to make sure I haven't fucked anything up. Yep. Invalid operands to binary. Uh, where were exactly? Oh, yes. Pi over C is a function that returns pi. That's C spice, don't blame me. Alrighty, so now we can take a look at what this is saying. Okay. Now, already we're seeing some real badness here because according to this, the moon's right ascension is somehow negative six, it jumps a lot between these two uh, dates, which it shouldn't do. It seems to sort of calm down here. 
uh, except now we're going backwards, uh, which is also not good. So lots of problems here. Um, not cool. Not cool at all. All right, well, yeah, this jump from declination from this number to this number is is insane. Okay, so what's going on here? What are we doing wrong? This um, does not look like it is doing anything terrible. Moon pause is a defined ver uh, value. Um, the only thing I can think of is maybe I got my variables backwards. Uh, but I don't think I have, actually. But let's go ahead and do it. Spike easy PC. The target body, yeah, that's that's fine. It's all reasonable. I guess just fine. I'm gonna return R to make sure that the moon is the correct distance from us. Um, I should not have to do that. And let's see if there's anything else I dislike about this. Um, I mean, even if I flipped Colette and Col I mean, this just is bizarre behavior on the moon's part. On Sea Spice's part, I, th I think the moon itself is probably fine. Someone should go check, though. Um, all right. One more time. Actually, I'm lying. It's going to be many more times. Okay. Well, the distance from the to the moon seems reasonable. Um... But everything else seems pretty whacked. Uh, well, the declination seems to finally clear up a little bit. Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. Okay. Let's see if the moon's declination is at least correct. Uh, so January the 11th at 1937. Pretty close to that right now. Not in Stellarium, not in real life. And the moon's declination here, and now this looks bad because we're already in some fairly southern looking stars, but it is uh, essentially correct. Um, I just got three pop-ups that I'm deferring. Uh, on my main machine, you can't see them. Okay, that's not terribly off. Uh, plus, it, the moon's declination does depend on where on Earth you are, so that's what I'm, I'm willing to live with that. So now, uh, well, let's just see how this proceeds then. Whoa, 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 Okay. So there seems to be a major issue here of where the moon, I, I'll, I'll need to look at these timestamps to make sure, but where the moon's 
declination goes from being 21 degrees to negative 17 degrees in what appears to be a short time, but might not be, because we are actually skipping 10 days at a time, so it's actually quite possible this happens, but let's see where this is. Oh, between January 11th and January 26th? Yeah, I believe it. Okay. Mm. Sixth, yeah, unfortunately, that that is reasonable. Well, we're gonna look at it, but I mean that that's pretty reasonable. Um, excuse me. That's the music you need to make when you're doing this. And here we have the deck. Yeah, it, it it's pretty accurate. Um, all right, so that's not the problem. And the right ascension for this should be minus two, which is bad, it's 22, yeah, okay, so that's fine too. Okay, so it looks like the moon is coming down fine. Now, the, the other problem, of course, is uh, even though I'm pretty darn sure the guy did his uh, stuff, I'm gonna, uh, do I need to? I'm pretty sure the guy did his stuff in J2000 coordinates, but hey, uh, maybe I'm wrong, and unfortunately, we need to bring this up in a browser. I think I already might have a copy of it, but let's take a look real quick. And this is really ugly. Um, yuck. Um, yup. Uh, I guess. I guess the thing to do is let's look at 3C this and see if we get the... Uh, it's possible that I screwed up the coordinate system here. Um, although the y-axis, I like, can't even see that, but it says the y-axis is the direction of 6 hours, the x-axis is in the direction of 0 hours, which is pretty much what we want. But hey, let's take a look here real quick. So now we're going to do that z grep again. There we go. Alright, so he makes it really easy for us because he does include the right ascension and declination. Uh, let's see what we're getting for our uh, three points here. Um, oh, come on. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Where is it? God damn it. I, I know I can tweak the program to get it. Why the hell not? Okay. Um, oh, this might be where we're doing the, the bad thing with star pause. This, m this might be the issue, uh, which I should have thought of earlier. And I didn't because I'm stupid. So star pause zero, star pause one. In theory, this is going to be the position of the ith star. In reality, we might have effed things up pretty badly. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put the position of the star as well. Um. Yeah. And I think I can take the rectangular coordinates myself. That is spherical coordinates myself. This, these are rectangular coordinates. Alrighty. 97 billion times. I say that too often. There is no charm. It just. Life sucks and everyone dies. Okay, <laughs> now we have enough to uh, kind of push it a little bit. Um, right, so that's declination. We kind of believe those numbers. Uh, the first star we're saying now is at this. Let's go ahead and echo those so we don't lose them. And fortunately, Echo did not treat this minus as an option. So those are the X and Y, Z coordinates of the first um, star. Uh, and let's look, let, let's just sort of basically say, um, uh, well, we only really need like two lines now. Nope, our sun's the, the, the coolest star. Okay. So first of all, let's make sure that these numbers actually show up in here. Minus 64, ooh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, because this star might not be bright enough for us. Well, let's look for this number in there then, and I don't mean f-grep, I mean z-grep. Okay, so this is the 120, that's not horrible. Um, and I think this is, let's make sure these three numbers are correct. Um, we know one of them's in there, because I searched, there we go. There we go. Yeah, okay, good. 
So we're looking at the bright star, star 122 in our, uh, which might be the first star we actually look at, uh, because the others are not bright enough. So this is Theta Octans, um, which I guess we could look up. Uh, I mean, he gives the data here too, but since we've got Stellarium up, we might as well... Oh, Theta Octans is almost at the South Pole. Um... Well, I mean, minus seven, it's 13 degrees from, it's not that close to the South Pole. Okay, which kind of sort of makes sense. Okay, so now, if I were computing the declination of this star uh, using these parameters, the, um, we take the arctangent of y over x for the right ascension. Um, there's only so much you can do with this, though. And the A tan, I don't know if we can do A tan of this. I don't know if this does A tan. But if it does, we'll find out. If it doesn't, we'll find out too. Yeah, it does. Um, very similar because arctangent and tangent at this level are almost, uh, almost the same. Tangent, arctangent, and the number itself are almost the same. All right, so that's in radians. I want it in degrees. So do this. I know I'm horrible. So about point, so less than zero hours, we're saying, basically. And this is, this is pretty accurate. Uh, it's a little bit off, but yeah, more off than I want it to be. But that's, that's okay, because we're, we're fairly low in the, in the um, we're fairly uh, l close to the South Pole here. So the other coordinate here is calc minus 64. Um, over the, let's see. Well, this may be a case where mathics could actually be not useful. All right. Every time I'm, I, I just keep hoping one day mathics will be useful for something. Come on, where's my freaking, all right, mathics, minus h, minus, minus persist, tilde bc git, mathics. You have your own special library because you suck. Oh no, the library would be here, easy lived up Mathix. Almost not worth it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and call this the temporary variable. We do need commas in it. Which hopefully, yes, at least I can do a read line manipulation here. Okay. And so now we have XYZ to spherical of temp. Okay, good, good, good. Now we want to divide by degree, I think. This is going to be ugly, but minus 77 degrees. Yeah, the last number has no meaning, obviously. But um, yeah, that looks OK, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. It's not ex you know, yeah, yeah, that's pretty accurate. OK, so it looks like that is um, correct. Um, so I guess now we have to <laughs> we have to dig even deeper. We must look deeper into our souls. Um, let's go ahead and put the. Uh, let's go ahead and redirect the output. It's going to be hideously long. Hopefully, it won't run our disk space. But, but let's try to find a case where it says there is an occultation. Uh, in other words, a case where. Wherever the fuck I'm putting it now. Oh, hang on. Um, am I no longer computing the separation? Um, or did I never compute? <laughs> okay, right, right, because the angular separation goes back to um, to this guy, uh, and so he would be printing. Um, yeah, different data here, but it's going to be really hard to see uh, among this sort of uh, cavalcade of other data. So let's go ahead and do this. We can. Um <coughs> Because we never return from this function, we can actually do this after the fact. Uh, percent %f, which will be um, angsep in radians uh, over pi c times 180 dot. Uh, and I guess I might as well put dot. No, 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 you don't, we're going to be consistent. No dot. We're going to live dangerously. OK, and then we could actually look at um, then we can actually look at the minimal separation and see what's going on there. So now let's make sure the output looks the way we want. It's getting more hideous every time. Um, hey, I didn't do a make, that's why. 
That's right. I, I, I compiled the program while it was running, which is actually okay because the program goes into memory. So it's, it's not like the program itself changes. Okay, let's make sure we're getting the output we want. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it's saying one degree. That's not correct, but I, I did I not convert from radians? Things up over pi. See, I did. My last number should be in degrees. But okay, that actually might be an issue. That might be why things aren't working. Um. Yeah, that's kind of weird, actually. Hang on, I'm not. I'm not happy about that. Um, oh, that's the angular separation required, not the actual angular separation between the star and the moon. And that is that is going to be very close to 2 degrees as we, or 1.2, depending on the, wow, it, that changes. Wow, I didn't know it changed so much. And I'm surprised it's this small, but I'll, we'll, we'll let it go. That, that's, not the, that's not the value we're looking for. All right, let's rid of that. We don't need that. So we actually want the separation between the star. Um, oh, so we actually do want a uh, star val. Um, actually, we probably want something else. We want... Yeah, we just want the raw separation uh, between the moon and the star. So this should give that to us in uh, radians, and this should give that to us in degrees. All right, let's see what happens. All right, and now we can actually look at it while it's doing. Ah, your mama. Okay, 68 degrees. This is actually kind of reasonable because we would expect 118 degrees. Yeah, it's, it never gets that close to this star because it's it's pretty far south. Uh, so that is an expected result. Um, so I guess the question is now, what happened to 3 Cetus? Um, which I think we declared was uh, star 355. Okay, so what we're doing now, this is, this, is, this is how we don't do it. Okay. We're just going to look at it now for, um, I want to make sure we get this right, <laughs> star 355, which is 3 Cetus. And I'm tempted to put like a warning here that we're, but I think maybe this is not warning worthy. Okay. Okay. Okay, that didn't take long as we expected. Well, that's fine. Okay, so it says the 19 degrees, 25 degrees, blah, 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 blah. and this time we actually can do a, a sort on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And see where it says this magical mystery moment occurs. I think I chose the wrong field. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's the... Um, that's the other output that we're actually ignoring for right now. Okay, so we're saying the smallest distance here is 13 degrees. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Um, goes up to 14 degrees, goes up to... Uh, but th we looked at the small, uh, and then it jumps. That, that's okay, though, because we're not... That is very interesting. So here it is not telling us at any time that the moon is within, you know, a fraction of a degree of this planet, of this star. So now we have some suspicion here. And so let's do this. This is ugly, ugly debugging. Uh, let's see if putting in the loop breaks it somehow. Um, so that might be the problem is I'm overwriting my arrays or doing something really stupid. Uh, and that, so it, it, it'll only break if 355 is somewhere inside of the, uh, the row. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. What? Oh, wait. What? Um. Hmm. Um. We define star pause, and were we defining I? Uh, I mean, I guess we're not, because it's inside this for loop, it's not available to the subroutine. Star pause better damn well be, a, uh, that might be the issue, and star pause is not available. Uh, fudge. Hmm. All right, let's declare a global variable real quickly. This just gets uglier and uglier. Um, we'll just set it to I. And because it's global, it should be available to this subroutine. And I do feel like it's a cunty variable. I, I probably could get away with calling it cunt, but I won't. Um, count undeclared first time in this function. Alright, that's that's because I need to declare it higher up. Uh, probably right up here with my other decks. Okay. Yep. Very strange behavior C has, but, you know. Something's wrong. Oh. Oh wow, I, I di I'm not suppressing this correctly, hang on, oh shit. Because in order to do this, I actually do want it to go through all, at least the first 355. So, I think I can probably, oh, there we go. Okay, so the moon, Jesus freaking Christ. Alright, Pomodoro time, back in 2 and 2. And we are back. Okay, all right, so we got this going here. Let's go ahead and look at this. All right, what are we printing here? 72, oh, are we not printing anything interesting now? Let's do a sort on this one. I'm pretty sure this is mm, 13 degrees is the minimal distance, which actually makes sense. Actually, does that make sense? Maybe. It's pretty far off the ecliptic. All right. If count not equal to okay, so print this. Uh, okay, so the star pause zero, one, and two should not be changing, obviously. And they should be equal to what we saw earlier. And... Okay, I guess because we're using a different star, let's go ahead and do... Okay, so do we have this 162 thing repeating here somewhere? Uh, 
we kind of would expect to see 162 in here somewhere. I might just be missing it though. Alright, well, let's do this. Let's look for a value that almost definitely will be in there. Better be at the start of 355. No. So for some reason... Oh, God. We're getting the data from here, from a totally different star. So is that, is that thing that might be a mistake? I'm making, obviously making a mistake, but the, the question is how am I making this mistake? Uh, so I need to um that's kind of weird in the fact that we don't even see the um two forty one that's fine oh and then the one eighty three okay so for some reason it's now looking at the totally different star than star what we hoped was star three fifty five and I know what's wrong with that because star three fifty five um is we were using the HYG data uh, number, not not the array number. So we need to be okay. Um, so this actually needs to be. It's not even a count anymore. I of zero. It needs to be the the index number uh, in HYG data, not in our array. Um, okay, so that actually might have been our problem earlier, is that we were looking at the, um, no, because I did print an I0. Alright, well, let's try this, see what happens. I'm just so happy when stuff compiles. And in this case, it's going to take a while to, do fudge and fudge fudge. Either that or we haven't, it hasn't refreshed yet or something. Okay. Well, let's do the sort minus K9 on it. Uh, 4.8 degrees, which is... pretty damn close. Um, let's see, so, well, let's, I guess let's make sure that we now have the correct star. Also, let's make sure that I know how to do what I'm doing, know how to grep inside of a compressed file. 403, do, do, okay, good, that was good. Um, and I guess we might as well just do a grep for one of its coordinates. Uh, no, that's not what I expected. Am I? Hang on, I might be. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. So this should be three five five. Okay, solid. Uh, so this is telling us that the the minimal distance is eight degrees, which is good. Um. So maybe I just got the wrong star. I mean, I'm waiting for a star to fall. Waiting for a star to fall. And blah 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 blah. Um. Okay. All right. So maybe I just whatever I've done is fixed. This is the uh, the hope and pray theory of uh, debugging. Uh, because we did a lot of shit here, maybe some of the shit we did fixed whatever was broken. Um. We can leave this here. It doesn't hurt anything to leave this here. Um, and then let's go ahead and print this. All right, uh, the hoping the Hail Mary version of programming. Um, oh, yeah, that's fine. All righty. And now we have much less output, so we can kind of. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Kinda wish I knew what we were looking at. And uh, I don't know. 
the last field, no, 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 we're now looking at the um, magnitude and that. So that's the separation is the third to last field. Magnitude and the number. So this is still the one, two, three, it's still the fourth field. Cool. Um, Again, I know that's not finished after doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so here we are again. Aha! The f the thing we're supposed to be looking for is star 204 in the HYG catalog, not star 355. So maybe that's where bad things have happened. I mean, we still have the problem with the date not working, but I mean, at least we're, we're like one step closer now. Uh, 204. Okay, and we did say that star is at uh, magnitude of something. Uh, 4.99, which better be in here somewhere. Okay, if that's not in there, we have a problem. I'm too lazy to check. Okay. I don't know how I got the 9.9 nine in there, but 4.9, I don't know. Anyway, so this is Hipstar 225017 already having bad feelings. Fashion <laughs> Chips Galaxy. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. 225017. Cool, which is actually not in here. Let's see if we can... Not great when, um, not great when it's not even in there. Okay. So, Star 224, tell us about yourself. Well, I like shopping. Oh, sorry. That was kind of weird. Um, hmm. Star 204. This looks like it's too faint to be in this, um, in our collection. I mean, it's too faint to be in frickin'... Stellarium. Uh, so it's going to be 204. Whoa. Okay, that's sort of. It. Let's make sure it was 204. It was, right? I mean, we. Um, did I fuck this up again? Alright, hang on. Um, I'm printing. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I'm not even going to. I'm going to stop printing. I. That's really confusing. The position in the array is not important. Okay, so it is actually star um, 355. Um, so we had it right the first time. And it, it is 4.9. So, th okay, there we go. 4.990, which is 4.99. And according to this, it is within a hair's breadth of the moon um, at this time. And again, at another time. No, sorry, different star. Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. So we, we've kind of come in a loop here. Um, three Cetus. Okay. So our testing before was correct. But the question is, how are you getting this number, which is the, um, the angular separation? And that is, uh, well, let's convert. Well, it doesn't even matter because May 20th at 1049. And I mean, that pretty much should be more than enough. Wow. Hit the wrong button there. Okay, there's our moon. Okay, and if I remember correctly, 3 this is like way the fuck down here. Um, is that 3 this down there? No. I'm trying to find it without having to use the search function, which I realize is stupid. But hey, it's my party, and I'll be stupid if I want to be. Okay. Okay, I'm 
tired of being stupid. Okay, so this... This is a 45 degree field of view, and this is nowhere near uh, the moon. So either I've got the moon's right ascension and declination wrong, or the star's right ascension and declination wrong. And I thought we computed it before, but let's go ahead and do it again. Um, uh, come on. Come on. Okay. Let's try that again. Because I'm pretty sure that was the wrong star we were looking at last time. Okay, and I think pretty much memorize these freaking coordinates. And we're going to assign them to temp. Okay, and then that is the we're gonna take um, XYZ the spherical temp. Get these numbers which aren't particularly useful to convert them to degrees. Okay. So now we have one degree minus ten degrees and a distance of thirty six no right, this is not is not meaningful anymore. All right, so if it's minus 10 degrees, uh, right, yeah, that's about right. And is it about one degree, very, very close to the zero hour, is what we're saying here. And that, that is also correct. So the only thing that could be wrong is that we're computing the moon's position incorrectly uh, at this time. So let's go ahead and fix this real quick. Um... Gotta be careful here because I, I want to order the board as much as possible. Um, uh, let's see. All right. I think I can say if count. I can, think I can do it here. we can get out of here. And then we don't need to check here because it's never going to get called. Okay. We will figure this out or we will not figure this out. One, one of those things will happen. Alrighty. That was a little bit too fast, but maybe it's not that bad because we actually have only... Alrighty. I have no idea what I just said alrighty though. I think I forgot to put in the, yep, I obviously wanted to put the printf here so we could get some data out of this. <sighs> I'm tempted to just do a make and not do a check to see if it actually works. All right, here we go. So the moon, um, So we actually do need to find where the minimum occurs, where we get this 0, 0.00 monstrosity. Not there! Okay. Um. Let's just see what the results are here. Um. Okay. So the results are very really different here. The, we no longer have that uh, very small angular separation. So we have this, this, and this is a four radian separation. And so I don't know where we're getting this. Um, yeah, so, but if we don't do it this way, for some reason, we get a, a bigger separation. A smaller separation, rather. Um... All right, so maybe we'll do it from here. It's possible the printfs are throwing us off. I mean, that sounds bizarre, but it, it, ha it has happened, and there are actually stories of that happening. So let's go ahead and do this. This is going to take a little bit longer because we are doing the computations for each star. We're only... Um, we don't have a weird, weird output, actually. Uh, okay. Okay, 
Somewhere in this monstrosity we have this big zero, zero, zero number. Not there, not there. No, 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 no. Let me just do a sort of minus K9 to see what it is. We, we're not going to be able to... Okay. That's not what we want. Still being weird. Okay, we'll give it a little bit of time to fin Okay, running. Let's see how many, how far it's gotten. Although this is going to be printing out a ton of crap, so. Um, interesting. It's not finished, but it's not really adding anything to the output. Have I turned it into a horrendous loop of some sort? Um, oh wait, did it finish? Uh, okay, I guess it finished. Alright, let's do this again. Um, okay, no. Because we need to get rid of it, we need to ignore all these. Um, we need to ignore all these outputs, so we have to move. Okay, now it's saying 4.85 is the smallest separation. Okay, we're gonna hunt this down. Yeah, even if it kills me. Okay. The only way to do it is run the whole program with this printf without stopping at 355 and then look for the output. We're going to call this alpha just so we have a, a name for it. The other one is moon. Uh, Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. Okay. Now, we pause for station identification. You are not watching a station. Okay. So with this, I want to make sure we're printing the, uh, the count here too. Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and print the count here as well. Oh, 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 I am the count. I love to count. So we can see exactly what it's computing for each of the the distances. And then print this over here. Um, this is meaningless now. So here we, I mean, in theory, we should really be able to do it with a much, this is not the most efficient way to debug. Uh, we should be able to minimize our set, do all sorts of crazy things if we wanted to. But, and this is just hideous, basically. 
This might be the ugliest um, debugging you'll ever see. Okay, so we start with the strong 122. Moon, da, 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 da. And what we're looking for, of course, is our famous, uh, what the hell was our star? 533? Help. I forgot what it was. All right, hang on. 355. So what we're looking for is moon space 355 temp output. That's surprising. Okay. Uh, eight. Da, 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 da. I guess we want to look for that zero zero. Oh, sorry. Hang on. We actually need to go to the position in the file where this uh, star three fifty five is, and then see how it's getting to that point zero zero seven. This is fun for me because I'm an idiot. Okay. So here we go. Let's find the next alpha value. Okay. Um. Okay. Closer to pro so it's, I mean one of these should be that point zero 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 seven value that we hate so much. Um. But it looks like it just skips right over that one. So what the fudge, dude? Um. Now, one thing we can do here, if this, this probably won't be finished yet, but if we do this, we can s filter out the lines we actually want. Let's make sure this is looking good. And we can do a sort minus K4N. And then just look at the head. Interesting. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Is this... Was that looking... Oh, no, no, no. This is the right value. So this is... A value, even in, I mean, that's, I mean, what that is giving us is sort of very strange sort of a uh, number, but um, it's giving us the, the multiple of this with respect to ang sep. Um, so this would mean, since ang sep is like two degrees, this would mean this is like much, much smaller than than that. Um, all right, let's look at this temp output. See how we get to this motherfucker. I'm getting a little bit annoyed here. I get, I get the feeling this is one of those problems that'll take like one second to fix, but three years to find. Okay, here we go. Um. Kind of bugs me that we're on count 10, th is that the first? Yeah, that is. 10,300. And that is, that is the, um, let's make sure this is correct. Um, so in the for loop, we do assign it to the, I, so this is good. Um, And did I F this up? No, I didn't. Um, why are these numbers jumping around like this? This is not cool. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing, but... HYG data... Um, no, this is completely wrong. This is, this is not at all what I want. Um, I do want HYG data I0. Because I want the star's um, number, not the number of the count that... Jesus fucking Christ, I'm an idiot. That's what's wrong. I'm actually pretty sure that is correctly what is wrong. Okay, let's make sure we don't have too many print tests. We don't. <sighs> oh, good. It, it ended somehow. Oh, count... Yeah, that's fine. And now we can do R minus K4. Come on. There it is. 
Uh, we don't even need to do that anymore. We can just do sort minus K4. So I think it's not going to be K5 because we added the alpha in there, and I don't think we got rid of it. Um, hang on. And if you're if you're wondering if I would if I were smart, I should do something like beg equal end equal, you know, actually sort of print out the. Um, so it is the fourth, actually. One, two, three, four. So it is the fourth. Uh, I don't know how it was still the fourth, but I guess I moved stuff around. Okay, here we are. So now we still have that point zero zero seven five, but this time it is happening with star 10,300 in the HYG catalog. All righty. 900 billionth times the charm. Now, I, I, I say that too much already. Someone give me a new catchphrase. Oh. Whoa, 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 and it's got to be another comma there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is um, 65 Chai 1 Cetus. Alrighty. That's, that's a handful. Ooh. Okay, I... Th oh, hello. You bastard, you were hiding as Al-Kaf al jidma Ai. This, this is why we hate Arabs. It's because they give stars stupid names. Okay. Let's go ahead and track the moon, but okay, this, this does look like it's going to do what I think it's going to do. Let's go the other direction. Okay. And now... Let's go on a world tour, man. Um, let's go on a world tour, like, somewhere where I can move these numbers without being blocking the scenery. All right, let's go ahead and move this number other way. Oh, yeah. Here we go. That's the ticket. I think I'm going to have to move the time for this. Nope, let's do this. And there you go, it's in the middle of the South Pacific. Booyah! Fucking booyah. Okay, so we've now confirmed one of the results. <laughs> Let's try to confirm another one. Let's, now I'm more confident this is working correctly, though. So let's go to the temp output. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this to uh, Git, just to be safe. And then we will uh, get rid of some of the unnecessary printing. I think the only unnecessary printing right now is uh, is this. And I think I'm going to be clever-ish. Um, and not print unnecessary values. And I'm going to be even more clever and actually tag my values. Aren't I smart? Um, HYG data J1. That's the magnitude. Okay. Right, we do want that. And we want the uh, star number. Um, I'll just call that ID, be because that'll be confusing enough to anyone who's trying to... It's the it's the HYD, uh, it's the HYD to ID. Okay, so this is actually looking pretty good. We Oh, the only problem here is we cannot sort easily uh, if we do this. That's why I didn't want to do that. Alrighty. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's actually go ahead and get rid of the variable count now that we don't really need it. Um, I do want to leave this printf statement commented out here because it, if something breaks again, it'll be it'll make it easier to debug. Ooh. Yeah, I probably shouldn't assign things I'm not um, that I haven't declared because this is a very picky language. Alrighty. So now, uh, and we can, again we could sort it ahead of time. And this time I think it's going to be sort. Okay. Time. Oh, is it the second variable now? Separation. 
It is, but how can it be that big? Oh, right, because it's measuring, the value it's measuring is not the, um, it's a multiple of the angular distance, it's not the number of radians. Okay, so we got that beauty going on here. Um, holy crap. This is a second magnitude star. When are we getting an occultation of that sucker? On July 13th. Okay, that one I shouldn't even have to look for because, I mean, that, that should be pretty bright. That should be pretty easy to see. Uh, that should be one of the, like, major, major stars. Okay. Uh, not you. Again, I'm once again tempted to not look up to see what star this is. And I guess that uh, actually a day is a pretty big time for the moon, so hang on. Whoa! Come back here! Goddamn moon. Keeps running away. Alright. Alright, I will take a look to see which star it is. Okay. So it's going to be e grep. No, nah, it's going to be z grep. Because I put a carrot in, it recognizes that I'm trying to do a, a regular expression grep instead of a regular grep. And the star in question is the brilliant new Pisces. Not not new as in. Oh, there it is. Um. I know it's wrong. Um, I also do not want the, uh, the, the magnitude is also going to be of the, the star we're actually looking at, um, not of the count number for some bizarre reason. Okay, did I, did I already, okay, so, let's do this again. Let's see if we really did finish doing that, I think we did. Yeah, no one's using that, so. Okay, now, breathe. That was for me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So this is a four point. Th these are all pretty faint stars that it is. Uh, it is occulting. Um, in fact, with this number less than one, we are not getting any great occultations. Because um, once we go be beyond one, there it's not even an occultation. Now what's interesting is if we look at this one, we should have a glancing occultation of star 4137. Okay, so this is correct, but boring. Uh -huh. we, we, have, we have plumbed the depths of uh, finding something that is mathematically accurate, uh, but not useful. So this will give us the occultation. So I guess the next thing to do is we go to my friend's site, and I don't, he's not my friend. But he's not, not a bad guy, but he's not my friend. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to do a sort, don't we? Sort, minus K4, just at the head of that. All right, and so now we need to see if CalSky lists any uh, occultations uh, for May 20th, assuming that they list occultations at all. They might not be interested in this. And this is where we come up to the question of, um, do we want to be publishing this data all at once, or does he or if he already does it, there's really no point. Uh, he's got HTTPS, so you know he's smart. Um, let's see the moon. No, 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 no. Lunar eclipse. Okay, that's what we want. Um, physical day calendar. That's what we want. And we do have to go crank it up to a uh, professional observer, even though I'm not one. Um, oh, let's go ahead and do hobby. Now you'll notice he's pretty stingy with how, how much data he gives out here. Uh, I think. I'm going to do a select duration of... Um, maybe he's not that stingy. What's the max? Oh, we could give a year worth of data here. So. I'm I'm not gonna be that picky and just say five days. Go. Um so this might actually be he might have everything we need here. Okay. 
Okay, why is this limited to the moon? Somehow, oh shit. Um, yeah, there's a ton of crap I put uh, he's putting in here, which is great, which is great. Um, what the hell, where's my control F? Oh, it's below this now. All right, so let's see if he catches this occultation. Jupiter, Moon, Europa. Oh my god. Um. Okay, not cool. Let's, let's see what's going on here. Um. So all I care about is lunar occultations. That could be a song. All I care about is you. And lunar occultations. Okay. Show me the lunar occultations for May and June. I think we're going to do one May 2020 from what just. Oh, cool. Zero hour. That's what I want. All right. Two months. And if you. I'll put it at. Yeah, you can't go beyond two months. So now let's go. Show me the lunar occultations for, for these. Dun, dun. I know who I am. Jupiter, Moon. Um, would be nice. Oh, there it is. Friday, May the. Okay, so we're gonna have to go all the way to twenty May, twenty two. I can't imagine he doesn't have this one listed. Uh, close to Zy one, SETI, which is I think the one we um the one we ultimately found was the thing that it did occult. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's Zy1 Pi, is it the same day? Um, am, I, am I way off? Oh, this is the one in July. Okay, back in 2 and 2. And we are back. <sighs> okay. Um, so I guess we want to look for the July 14th one. Although I would n not be... I mean, this guy, this guy gets it. He's pretty smart. And I guess what's different for him is he's even allowing us to choose the uh, location where we're viewing this. Um, which is why he says close to, but you know, not occultation of, because uh, occultations are specific to where you are, because the moon moves around a lot. All right, so we're saying the 14th, and I can't imagine you won't have this one listed. Um, all right, here we go. 
Um, wait, what? Moon close to Taiwan City. That's kind of weird because, um, hmm, are we on the wrong day? We, hmm, hang on. Okay, am I, am I missing something? Yes, I am. Uh, in fact, we were looking at uh, Chaiwan Zeddy, I think. And we were annoyed because it has a stupid Arabic name. Uh, not that one, though. It's probably this one. I'll cough your mama. Oh, Jesus Christ. Where did it? Where'd it go? Come on. Baby needs a new pair of steadies. There it is. Um... I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing, but you know, that is so typical of me. Yeah, there we go. Back here. Yep, there we go, and I think we have to change the, the location to get it, get the occultation to happen. Okay, so this is, he is correct, of course. Uh, this is Chaiwan Seti. Okay, so one reason he can't do a dump of everything is because he actually takes the the location into consideration, um, not just the, um, I'm tempted to see if this is like literally right where I live, which would be kind of creepy, but, um, actually I don't think it is. Uh, actually, I think it's a little bit, I think it's the airport actually. Um, God, I hope it is. Anyway. Someone, someone, okay, don't, don't actually do that. Um, okay, so, uh, I had planets checked for some reason, I don't want that. Let's just even adjust the lunar occultations. And... Hmm... Okay. Alright, so this guy's got me beat here. Um... And I think... Oh, he... Okay, he limits when you can do these computations, which probably makes sense. Um, but okay, we've done it. We've now, we've now created a program, totally redundant, that computes when the moon is occulting a given star somewhere on Earth. Um, we do need to improve it a little bit to go for, you know, more years and stuff, but, uh, but let's see. Um, we don't really actually need to compute this anymore, and we, we do need to compute this. Um, Okay. All right. Let's see what else is on our list. I have been streaming for about uh, one hour forty-five minutes, which probably is how long I would want to stream for, unless we can find something else interesting to do. At least, if we want to plan it for the next time. Okay. Um. Yep. 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 Okay, and the other big thing I wanted to do today was look at the ecliptic longitudes of various uh, planets uh, because the, the question that was asked earlier is how often are planets in the same zodiacal sign, but in which case, if you're doing, you know, quote-unquote, modern astrology, not astronomy, you're asking in which multiple of 30 degrees of ecliptic longitude it is. Um, and if you can show that there's sort of a pattern there, um, it's, it's still very hard to compute, but you could sort of get an idea of how often it'll happen, how often the whole cycle repeats. Um, I think I already have something that dumps the ecliptic coordinates, so that's not going to be difficult. Uh, the difficult part will be, um, well, I guess we'll see what the difficult part will be. Let's see if I can find the uh, X term. Uh, that's the difficult part of finding the X term. Okay. Still no one here? Good, 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 good. Um, I think it is BC Eclipse Dump. It's actually a fairly, and it even gives you this beautiful, so the observed will be, um, let's go make the observed um, Mercury. Uh, the observed will be us, and we'll go 2020 to 2021. Um, yeah, we are actually I keep forgetting, we're 399. The 99 is the... Okay, and there we go. And... Oh, uh, these are Julian days. Uh, I, good thing I did that, because it's really confusing. 
And these are the, uh, I think, the ecliptic latitude, longitude, and some other number. So just always have some random number be printed out um, for fun. Um, it should actually probably say somewhere what it actually returns. Um, okay, to G, right, right extension. Oh, I think this was originally to print out some star charts. So this is the angle that the planet makes from the Earth to the sun. This would be how close it is to the sun. Um, so I, technically this is not the right ascension and declination. This should be the, um, the ecliptic longitude and latitude. Um, let's, okay. I, this is, this is not Um, I think I copied this, so let me put a to-do in here. Are uh, these really eclip, lawn, and lat? Because I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Because uh, I use this to print out my lovely little, uh, little star charts of, uh, of when planets are visible. I think I might have one or two examples in Astro. Probably I am lying now because I said it. Uh, no, that's the spice. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, well, let's see. Um, there is a way to get from this data here, which basically just tells us Julian Day, planet, uh, and the right ascension, blah, 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 and I'm pretty sure that there is a way to create a map from this. And, okay, well, that would be a good, good start there. And I'm hoping this thing will be... Sp okay, fuck. None of my programs are that well documented. I'm getting kind of sick of it. BC, what is that? Ecliptic map. Um, ecliptic latitude, distance, okay. Um, apparently, I get the feeling this the temp work is in the wrong format though. Uh, it is planet ID, Julian date, ecliptic longitude, ecliptic latitude, distance, and solar angle. So the solar angle is going to come off as being zero, which is incorrect. But you know what? I think I don't care. Um. Yeah. Oh, do I have fly installed here? I better. Wow. I am somewhat surprised. I need to have fly installed here. This won't work without fly. Um, wow. Really? I could have sworn I built fly. Oh. Alright. Let me see if I have a build directory in here. I do. Cosmo. That's not what I want. I would be surprised if we've gotten along this. Unpipe that to less, so we can get rid of all the errors. I'd be surprised if we've gone this far without um, without needing fly. I will be. That's kind of way weird. Um, I mean, you could. I mean, it's it's effectively a wrapper around libgd, so it's not like that exciting, but, um, huh. Maybe, maybe I've got too much crap here. And maybe, maybe, because I've got this, oh, I've got an SSH FS mount going, that is really ugly. Um, so I don't want to be looking at, I don't want to be doing a find across a mounted directory. Um, I think you can stop finding a device. Yeah. Um. Because if it's on my other machine, if it's on my other machine, I can easily find it. Oh, shit. Okay, that's not what I expected. Let's just look for fly. Let's see if you find that. 
No. Okay, hang on one second here. I'm on another machine. Wow. I do not have Fly installed on this machine. Um, and I do need it. I, I don't think there's any getting around needing it. I mean, I could rewrite it, but, you know, whatever. Could I rewrite it? Hmm. I'll put that on the to-do list. We may one day want to rewrite Fly. Okay, but until then, we can just download it from somewhere. Uh, and it's by Martin Gleason, because the word fly has too many. There we go. Um, and I'm almost wondering if we... I, I, I don't know why I haven't... Um, I should be building his root, I'm thinking. No. Wow, okay, I guess not. Um Um this I think is even too old to do a shut configure. Okay. Okay, so now let's do BC Eclipse top map. This fits out this, which we take and put it into... I need to move fly from where it is to somewhere useful. Um, if this works... Yeah, there we go. Um, so this shows the position of Mercury uh, on the... That is the... Nice. This is the ecliptic. The, the little purple line here is the ecliptic. It is not the... Uh, it is not the... Uh, it's so strange that it's working even though it should, shouldn't be working. It, the line there is the ecliptic, not the celestial equator. Unfortunately, this is so big, it's kind of hard to see. So let's do this. Let's just call it temp, temp gif. Beautiful name. And I should have made it quiet, but anyway. And we'll just use XV. Uh, or maybe we won't. Um, yeah, this is a really big, big uh, thing to look at. Um, So presumably this shows Mercury looping through the ecliptic um, over the year. Um, I don't know why it's working because it, the format it says it's it's possible that it it says it takes a format that it doesn't actually take. I mean that's that's very very possible. Um, so it really doesn't take the distance anymore. So, updated some documentation. All right. Okay. Uh, so this basically this the the output of that gives us the ecliptic longitude, which gives us the uh, the house or whatever you call it. This is in. Um, so now what we can do with this is we this is the this is the ecliptic longitude. Um, what we can do with this is we can map it um, over time, and we should see a re repeating pattern. And I say that with, uh, we'll just pick out the second thingy there. Now, I don't think I can do this. I don't think this will, this will work. Nope, didn't like that. Um, okay. And so now, new plot, plot temp eklong. Okay. And you can see there is this sort of pattern. Um, Actually, it's not even as good as I thought it would be. Um, and this, by the way, is just a connectivity issue. These the 2 pi and 0 are the same here. Um, this is not what I wanted. Okay, hang on. Let's go ahead and dump the coordinates for a few more years. And let's do this, and now we should see, there we go. And the idea is we see a pattern in the ecliptic longitude. In theory, and this is what we're going to try to do here, we could take these and merge them on, holy shit. 
That's not even cool. Hang on, let me... Unzoom, unzoom, damn it, unzoom. There's a way to unzoom here, I don't remember how though. Yeah, anyway, screw it. Unzoom, damn it. Crap. I guess I'm going to have to do it again. Uh, the idea here is uh, these things repeat every so often. The houses repeat every so often. Although, to be honest with you, this looks ugly. This is not what I expected. Um, there's clearly a pattern here. Well, actually, this makes sense whether we think about it. There is a pattern here, but the pattern is going to be based on Mercury's orbit of 88 days, or its Sedonic period with Earth, which is, I think, a little bit more than that, but pretty close to 88 days. Not on the Earth's year, so... Um, so I guess the retrograde motion is not... Re we cannot really average this over a Mercury orbit and say that the 88-day period looks like this. Uh, it only repeats once every so many years. Uh, that is a terrible, terrible thing. I'm not happy about it. Um, unfortunately, I think it's also going to be true of all the other planets. Um, so to say that this is... Uh, yeah, there, there's really no way to sort of average this. I'm trying to think if there's a way to... If we had the correct period... Um, not 88 days, obviously, but whatever the period is to go from here to here, uh, or here to here, if we could sort of, but even then, it, the house, the, the constellation number increases. So this is a terrible, terrible thing. Um, yeah, well, we would normally Pomodoro now, but I think I'm going to call it for now. Thank you for watching the stream. Goodbye for now, and I might be back later today, and I might not be back later today. Those are the two possibilities.